Now we reopen everything in the vise. That way it gives me, I don't have to hang it up and, and fight it. Okay. And you're just clamping it right to that tail there. I clamp right to the tail and then we're just going to follow the, the red and green, the red and brown line. Okay. So right down that yep. hind leg where right the color the, separates Right down there. the hind leg. Go right around the vent. And we'll go right around the vent on this side. Since we use. And you're going all the way kind of around. Just right around. The top. Yep. Then we go right around on one side of the leg. Same on this side. Now we're gonna use a machine. Even if you're gonna pull it by hand, all you really gotta do is just get that started. Okay, right. Same thing on this side. Gotcha, and you're not worried about saving that kind of foot area? Nope, we don't, the... nope, not unless you want to tan it. Yours, uh, you know, you wanna do with the feet on that uh, taxidermy, you know. Okay. And that would be, uh, yeah, for coyotes, no. So that would be another one thing you want to use, do, especially if you're going to make a, a bite, any sort of a puller, just loosen up right on that, right on the hind hock here, right on the hump. It has a tendency to stick right there. And then you got to get tailbone out, and that's what that's for. And this is from the 50s. Okay. The old tailbone puller? Yeah. Look at that. There she goes. Wow. And there are some hand ones you can buy or do them by hand. Okay. As you can see in these coyotes, I'm just gonna grab one. Just give you a quick heads up. Like I showed you, we don't use them so we didn't cut them off short. Just like yours. Last thing we need is a leg this long. Because before we tan it, we're gonna cut them off. Okay. Okay. So I use. A limb lopper. Right at the front leg. This one was, was froze. But. Just kind of right at the joint there. Right at the joint. And then when you cut these legs off, make sure, and, it, and I see guys do this, it gets to be a hobby, don't cut these back into the body. Don't cut what now? Don't cut these like this and then head back this way. Oh, okay. Or you'll cut right up into the body. And you fold your legs in half, just like so. And I gotta grab my third vise. We use three vices on them. He's a little froze, but better froze than, than spoiled, right? Okay, gotcha. Look at that, that's pretty slick. And then we put a third vice on it. Helping it along there. We're I'm just helping along, just cutting that membrane just a little bit. If you can, if you're ever going to cut that membrane, always go towards the coyote. And then you're going to have two ears and right down to the nose. And all coyotes, and, that, and this is coyote is, is perfectly is going to tan fine. Mm -hmm. They all get a little green. I was gonna say you got you know, that, oh. that that discoloration there. And a I was little like, bit oh man, is this thing still okay? A little bit's fine. Don't okay. Worry about it. Okay. A lot, no, but a little bit, yeah. Next, before you flesh, we're gonna take the bird axe out. Okay. So we take out. Especially yeah, you in, can see those birds in there, and you can oh, hear to that the comb getting them out. Welcome to the Midwest. It's not, it's the burrs and those little um, weed seeds. You know, once, I tell you what I find is, and it's true this year, more than ever, is once the guys have had some of it, um, and most of them aren't just dirty, but that's why he saved it. We get them in, guys won't take any of this out. They'll just leave them right in. Yeah. Then I get to do it. We have to do it before we sell them, you know. 
in some of them it just takes a while. I mean, they, um, you know, they'll buy, maybe the first year they'll learn to flash, do some stuff, see if they like it. Okay, so I yeah. take out just enough that I'm not going to tear it, hopefully, on the beam. Yeah. But you can see that one was rubbed. And that, a lot of this is his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He's been living in a brush. You know, he's just rubbed out across the shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It happens. Okay. Now to flesh them. We use a beam. Now, is this beam, I think we are talking about this earlier. Could you do any number of critters on this beam? Yep. It's going to be the same? Yep. You can actually, you can do any, um, any species on it. That'll fit on it. Obviously, a mink won't, but I start up on top here. It's, it's about an inch, inch and a half. Mm -hmm. If you go all the way down, as far as you can reach, it's about 16 inches. It's seven and a half inches. Okay, wide? Yep. You saw it's, a, I suppose they call it two bait, but seven and a half, like everything. And then you just taper it. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got their, their own style. What I do is I just basically took my coon board and traced it. For the most part and then stayed on the outside the black marker yeah because that'll give you the okay okay that'll give you your board length and then as far as you know the height i mean is that something that you kind of want to have it hitting you personally in a specific it, spot it's uh, going to be a personal preference i'm so used to using that one height that if the board has moved that much i yeah. feel it <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you want to taper your your board there's a lot of knives on the market. They all use the same concept, mm -hmm. and that is a sharp side. Mm -hmm. That's a sharp side and a dull side. They started to dull up this side, but when they went to the tanners to do beaver, pluck beaver, both sides were sharp. Mm. So they really were sharp. So what you want to do... Is having both sides sharp for that application because you want to, you're doing a stroke yes, forward and... Yes, and that's your dull side, with, and this is your finesse side to cut. Okay. So what you want to do... See if it's, you buy a new one, it's too sharp. You can see my saw meat marks. Just put it on there and saw your wood down. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can see right there, and that'll dull up your dull side. Sure, yeah. So, you take your coyote. You have to split the tail. Everybody's got one of those, right? Oh, yeah. An oleum knife. If you don't, Grandma's got one in the garage. And you just take that right down. You'll walk it'll go right down, your, right, down your, right down your tail. I'm missing out, Mark. I don't have one either, Jim. Oh, that's okay. Got it. All right. <laughs> if you go to the first garage sale, you can find one. All right. And what is, is that some, what, what is that normally used for? It's an old linoleum knife. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Roofing knife, they call them, too. Okay. These, yeah. Hmm. But they're, these are obsolete today. You'll, they still sell them there where you can find them. I've been to how many garage sales and looking auctions. Mm -hmm. Quarter box, there's like five of them in there. <laughs> okay. The cartilage you get out of the ear, the hardest part, if you ask any trapper, is learning to get the cartilage out. Because you got, yeah. you want to get, so you make a little slice right towards the eye. Okay. Then you pop the ear out. Oh. If you take a three-point knife, you run it up the ear, and pull it to the side. You just take that, whoop. And coyotes, you got to watch, sometimes they'll have uh, scars on them. Okay. And they'll, they'll just split right on the seam. Yeah. Make a little cut because they can't always get it out. Pull it out. A cut. On a coyote, where you want to get above, if they're having trouble getting their ear out, you see the flapper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens is you want to get above that. Because if you come out with your knife right in it, mm -hmm. you'll rip your ear off. Okay. So the guys will leave too big a cartilage to here. It'll come all the way down to here. Yeah. Gotcha. And then your knife only comes out right there. So when you run your knife up, you want that knife to come out right at the top of it. Okay. If you don't, you're going to struggle the first time you try to take the cartilage out of the ear. Okay. Noted. Then to flesh them. With most articles, you'll start with ear off to the side on one side, legs always in the middle. Okay. Just like doing a coon, and then I'll take your sharp knife and just get it started. A coyote does not have to be fleshed as clean as a coon. 
And why is that? They'll dry. You can over, a, a coyote's got thin leather, mm -hmm. so you don't want to over flesh them. Okay, gotcha. Okay. You can, a coon's thick leathered, his leather out, it's greasy, but a coyote you can actually over flesh. Okay. Okay. So is don't. the sharp side here? That's my dull side. This oh. is your dull side. Yeah, the sharp side would, is like that. So the dull side is more of a, a that's, push, that's, and you are kind of cutting with yeah, the sharp. Yes, the dull side. With your dull side, you never want to move your dull side side to side. Okay. It's just strictly pushing. It's more, pushing. more of a scrape. It's a scrape. That's why they, yep. So you bring it down. Be a little bit careful. I got some, remember, I left the bird, the seeds in there to get them out after they're done. But this little oil that's underneath this, this leather, mm -hmm. don't get in the habit. See, I'm building that up. Yeah. Don't take too much of that out. It's going to dry too hard. Yeah. Okay. And then it's like a, uh, getting, your, getting your shoes wet. They get hard, and you want them nice and limber. With fleshing, the problem you're going to have is you're always pulling that membrane, right? Mm. So just take your sharp knife and just break the membrane. Okay. Then you don't have to fight it. When it comes down to the very bottom, there's a membrane on this right there. Mm -hmm. You do not have to take that off. If it doesn't come off with the sharp side, it stays on. It okay. will come off in the dress, I guarantee it. Because right now, the dresser is going to really finish doing a lot of your fleshing. Okay. And all this is, is to get it to dry. Okay. If it dries, leave it on. And again, I'm not, with coyotes, I'm not a fan, uh, fussy flesher. All I want to do is get it to dry. And a blue leathered coyote, if he's not prime, mm -hmm. You probably don't even want to quite flush this clean. All you want to do is just take that membrane off. Okay. But as you get more comfortable with your knife, at first, that you... So you come down. I'm going to clean my faces up just so they don't rot. Okay. And it makes them feel nicer when you pick them up. If you're going to go to work, do your... I think it's kind of probably like doing anything if you're going to do it. Might just will do a, as good a job as you can. Yep. Right. Most trappers are really proud of their stuff. Yeah. And some of them, most of them want to be. They do fantastic work. But most of the time with a coyote, unlike coon, you can just, once that membrane's gone on both sides, you can just work it back and forth. These are all wood ticks. Wood ticks. See, yep. They would delete the black My dots. Goodness. And is that just over time, or were all those on the animal when it died? They might still be there. Oh. <laughs> They're dried up. My. Some of them I was combing out, probably dead, dead oh. ones. Okay. Exactly. One thing you don't want to do is stretch your coyotes too wide. And I know you can even do some stuff on, you'll hear on the book, you're using nine inch stretchers. Mm -hmm. okay. What they do on them, is they go on the inside. To, what they did is they measured the inside of the coyote, that's nine inches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if you have a, now if you put your coyote on a board, oop, you put your coyote on a board, like so, don't stretch your coyote too wide because, let me grab my pins, I'll show you one of the biggest mistakes on a coyote is, if you look at a coyote, the weakest part of the coyote is always over here on the side, right? Okay. Remember now you're looking at the rubbed ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if I took this and I had it over there in the back and start making it look thin, you can see the gray, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So if you stretch a coyote and you're worried about the size, so I you notice I didn't press, mention get into the sizing too much, and you worry about the size and you pull the back down, the belly goes this way, right? Mm -hmm. You pull it like this, and all that weak spot ends up in the back and makes your back look weak. Oh. You now you got belly fur in it, okay? Hmm. But if you pull your belly down first, it's the opposite of all the other animals you do. Interesting. So if you pull your belly side down first. Is that just regular old thumbtack? Yep, regular old push pins. What kind of uh, what kind of wood is that board made out of? Do you got a? It's basswood, real thin, uh, real yeah, it's basswood. Soft. Yeah, all the guys that make them, yeah, they use all basswood. 
And then I'll pull the window down and just tuck it, tuck it. Okay. And bring the back around. And again, you don't want to pull this too tight. You bring your belly back. Yeah. Right. Kind of undo what you just did by. Yeah, undo it. You're right. Just undo it. And, I, and everybody, you know, everybody that puts fur up has a signature. So you can go through coyote or coon. And I can see I want, and I know who did it. I've never met him, but I know his name. He shipped, <laughs> oh, he shipped again this year. Here's his stuff. I was wondering what he was doing. Interesting. So you're going to do your coyotes. And you're not going to do them like I do. You're going to, you'll get them all flushed, but you're going to tack yours out different. It's not going to devalue them. It's just the way you do them. Okay. The biggest, the problem they have is these get down and then they spoil, right? Underneath the armpit. Right. It kind of mm. suffocates it there. Yeah. Like so we'll do it the old fat, fashion. You don't have to go spend a lot of money. You can use string. I use cast reading band. Okay. I think it makes, it's, it helps my drying. It also makes the coyote look nicer. Or you can use a rubber band. Now just do three wraps. Now what I do is I just trim this off. Okay, gotcha. So you just kind of leave a little, little tuft right a little on top, tough. but I'm so gonna, it's not covering any of that. I'm gonna trim that just to get it out of the way. That's because it's me. I don't have to. But and it's gonna sit like this for a while. Gonna sit like that until. It gets like this, it's dry to the touch. So how long does that sit like this that? Was on, until I it put gets... this on last night. Okay. Um, uh, that was just like basically. They shot it yesterday. Four hours. They shot it yesterday, so I skinned it, put it up to the demo today. And then what I did is I put it, uh, I left it hanging there until about uh, 6.30. And I put it back there out in the cold because it was already dry, but it's really dry in here. Okay, yeah. right. If it's kind of pretty much dry to the touch, don't use borax. You're going to get a headache. Okay. All you got to do is take some baby powder. We use this, and this isn't new. We use this in the 60s on the Red Fox. And what that will do is it will stick to wherever it's wet, correct? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Which means it won't stick to your board. Ah. Oh. Because yeah. the reason you got to wait the turn is it's going to stick to the board. Yeah. Okay. So then basically you should be able, you should be able to turn them just like that. If they get too dry, you don't have to all lose any sleep over it. Okay. So Let's you kind of want it, like, I mean, you can hear that that is pretty dry, but you kind of, ideally you want it. But like this is perfect. Okay. This is that, this would actually be perfect. Okay. Okay. Now, then what you want to do is just put it all back right on the same stretcher you got it off of. And if you can, center your coyote, which you see I didn't do mm -hmm. it. I got my leg caught. So you want your coyote centered. A lot of times if those legs will catch and then you'll get crook crooked on the stretcher and it'll make it look like that and your line will be off the side. Just the net will look weak. Okay. Gotcha. I want that. And when you're looking at it, if you look at that looks weak on the one side, yeah. it's stretch perfect. Huh. So we pin them down. And the ears. A lot of this stuff we do is cosmetic, which there's nothing wrong with it. I like to have a, a lot of guys here will just do one pin. I like to do, I like to just uh, go one step wider and beat them really good. I like, I like tech mine. Like they just because they look nice. Yeah. You're worried there's a little blood on it. You can do two things. Oh, yeah. I, you can wait until it's completely dry. Right now it's still wet. And you can take a mixture of equal parts cornstarch, cob meal, corn cob meal. Okay. And that will actually take your dried blood out. Okay. And you keep working it in that blood and it'll take it out. Interesting. And now, if you just take a comb and comb it, it'll be, it'll be gone. Oh, yeah. The other thing you can use, and I like using this stuff. I use a lot of Dawn dish stuff. You can take a rag. You really want to shine. I don't, 
to save your washroom. And I will clean them with that. Okay. Another Ooh. thing that smells nice. I know. And the last but not least, you comb them. Again, I'm not going to be worried about the, uh, the blood because when it dries, it'll come right out. Especially with a really fine comb if you want to. So we'll take them, just comb these out. Remember about being heavy and semi-heavy, heavy and light. The last but not least, I'm going to take these, put them on the cement floor. And tack them in. You see how nice they stand? Oh. Now yeah. looks, see how nice it looks now? Yeah. The vibrations, you can't do that with a comb. See, it looks interesting. Oh, I'm getting the high. Okay, I'm yeah. following now like the fur, yeah. All uniform. <laughs> now it looks more uniform. Remember that it did have that mark in it? It makes it look smaller, right? Yeah. Okay. Looks great. And then you leave it on the board for like a couple days. Okay. Then all you have to do is go to work, just take it off, put it right back in the hook and let it dry. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's not a drying board, it's a form. Okay, right. And then it'll, it'll puff up just a little bit for you and it's gonna look like, uh, like that one. And that one's, well, it looks heavy, I pounded it. I, I did this one. Right. Now, is there, is there some characteristic that you would look at, like, say, a couple days later and be like, oh, yeah, that's ready? Yeah, I tell you what it is. Usually, as a rule of thumb, is I hang it when the tail's dry. Oh, okay. Right? I run my finger down it, and when that tail's dry, or you take these off, and your ears are dry, it's ready. But so no, what, I, and then I guess once you do that, you mm -hmm. hang them up, mm -hmm. you dry them, let's, and then is that at that point? Bring them to a person like you. You bet. Now. Then after they're stretched and dried, you got a, You still do have a, quite a few options that we didn't have. You know, fur buyers will buy them. They got you opened up a big avenue of guys that didn't want to buy green. Okay. Oh, stretch and dried. Yeah. I'm... Well, well, yeah. I, I can tell you, I know a heck of a lot more about fur and putting up fur than I did when I got here, Jim. Yeah, and then they know there's 14 species. And then the next you got red rust, <laughs> uh, muskrats, mink. Yeah. Well, yeah. they reached the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but at least it got started bobcats, you know, and done pretty much the same way. Yeah, there's, you know. So, with all that said, now we've answered the question, what do we do with one of these coyotes once we actually, hopefully, shoot one? And uh, that was all thanks to Greg here. And so, anyway, I think next up, next you see us, we're going to be done talking. We're going to be hunting. From what I gathered, right? Am I missing anything else? Any I, other prep work? I think, Jim, no, I think we'll be hunting and then hopefully doing a little bit of this. That's right, and if you have now learned something, you're gonna go out and try and do a little bit of this yourself, then you know where there's basically like one of the only places left in the world to then send this stuff off, and that is the uh, Fur Harvesters Auction Inc. right here. And it's like local to us. It's right next door. Heck, if you come out here, you should just swing on over to Vortex too. Um, so that's super awesome, but yeah. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.